everyone. Good evening, everybody. Make sure my mic is good. Looks like it's working. I am Vanessa the Crafty Gemini. Welcome to my sewing studio. I'm so glad that you all could join us. I can barely see the chat on the computer, but it looks like a ton of you are on. I'm so excited that you joined us. We're going to talk a little bit about sewing with stretch knit fabrics today. I'm working on a project for my daughter, and then the project I'm working on is actually the same garment that we're going to be making in my new online course. And I know a lot of you out there have been waiting for it. The Jali Helene, or Helene if you're pronouncing it, I guess, in the English translation, uh, cardigan. This is the cover sheet of the pattern. Let me know in the comments if you have been waiting for this cardigan course. I know a lot of you have, and things got delayed a little bit because of everything going on this year in the world. And I'm super excited to be here for a lot of reasons, right? Here is my latest sewing machine. I recently upgraded to this Juki. You all know I love my Juki sewing machines. I still have all my other ones. I use them a lot for classes and my retreats, everything. And this one, I just started kind of familiarizing myself with it. As you can imagine, with computerized sewing machines, the more it costs, the more stuff it has. So that means the more you have to spend time with it so you can really get your money's worth and get out of it everything that it can do. So I'm gonna be using this machine today to finish sewing up my daughter's cardigan. And so we'll be talking a little bit about a bunch of stuff. Any questions you have, go ahead and type them in the comments or the chat going on right now. And we will be, uh, I don't know if you can put the questions up on the screen, ask me the questions, whatever it is, so that we can um, answer some of these questions. And as we work our way through this little demo, we talk more about the project, then at the end I will announce and we will post the link for you on where you can sign up at the early bird sale price for this cardigan online course, okay? So I'll be talking about that. I will let you know up front, we do have some kits to go along with the course once we release it tonight as a part of this demo and live chat. When we open it up, if you've gone to our online uh, shop so far, if you are used to buying kits from us, you might notice that it's not there. It's because it's actually tucked away in a hidden link. So about the first 45 to 50 students who register for the course will actually be the first ones that will have access to ordering a kit. They are at a deeply discounted price. We are shipping internationally. Uh, and so basically once you sign up for the course and you log in on that first welcome video, you'll see the secret link there on where you can go to get your kit. So we're making it all kinds of fun this time around. You all know that I like to switch things up. And another thing that is probably going to be the biggest difference between my past paid for courses and this one is that we are working with a brand new platform. It's super streamlined. All the video lessons for this cardigan course are already posted. So if you get in tonight at the early bird sale price, you'll be able to watch all the video lessons tonight before you go to bed. If you stay up late like me. So here is one of the, the cardigan that I'm actually working on all the under the sleeve and the sides are all pinned up. So this one is for my daughter. You can see what I did on this one. I wanted to have a sample and also a cute one for her that's made up of two different fabrics because on the pattern sheet, all the ones that you see here on the Jali models, they all feature just one fabric for the entire cardigan, which is cool, you know? But if you're a scrap busting kind of sewer like I often am, and you don't have enough yardage to make the whole cardigan out of one print or one color, look how cute. You can make it in two. So the bottom half is one print, or one solid in this case, and then the top is the polka dotted print. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm gonna grab you some of the cardigans that I already have here. If you haven't seen them already, we'll talk a little bit about different fabrics. And in the video course, you'll see that there are 28 different lessons. So a ton of content, okay? This one was made in the slub knit. It's super, you can see that it's almost kind of sheer. So it takes on a really casual look to it. Whereas if you make it out of something a little bit heavier, like a double knit, which you've seen me wear this one a bunch of times, I like to wear this one with a matching pencil skirt. And we can put up that picture so you can see how I made it into like a little suit for a more formal event that I attended last year in New York City. This one was made in Liverpool. And so we'll put up the picture there so you all can see how I was wearing it. I even had a friend of mine from law school ask me, uh, she messaged me when she saw the pictures and she said, where did you get that suit? And I was like, girl, you know I made it. She's like, I should have known, I should have known. So it was super cute to make like that. Another super casual option is making it out of cotton spandex or cotton lycra, as people like to say. It's just a t-shirt material. 
So it still has pockets, and it's just something like if you're inside your house and the AC is going or you're going to be in and out of buildings, you know, like something more casual to throw over even for cooler nights in the summer. I love color, so you know I like to make it a little funky. This is one that you probably have seen the picture of me wearing it already on social media. It has feathers in it. And so I will say some of these prints are the ones that you'll find in the kits. So once you sign up for the course, you'll be able to go into that first lesson on the platform and you'll see the secret link to get in on your kit. There's about seven or eight different fabrics for the kits. Another one, you know, we for sure put in there some kits of just black solid fabric. This is what I made for my daughter. It's just in black bullet, but the top stitching was done in a teal color that she wanted. So that's another cute little way to add a pop of color, even though it's just a plain black cardigan. Are we getting any questions right now from me that I can answer before I start sewing up this one? Um, only one real question about okay. this pattern. And um, let's see, the question is, is there much difference between this pattern and Helen's closet black wood cardigan? Oh, you know what? I'm not familiar with the black wood cardigan. I've seen it, but I don't know the technical lines on it to see how it comes together. I will tell you that this one, and you'll hear me say this a bunch of times in the video lessons if you sign up for the course, is that the construction, like the design of it is ingenious. The pocket is built into the front piece. So if you're someone who maybe is a beginner at sewing clothes and you're thinking, there's no way I can make this cardigan, I'll point out a few different things that I think make it an awesome beginner project. All you need, and a lot of you will be surprised to hear this, is a sewing machine that can sew straight. So the cardigan that I'm working, from, uh, working on for my daughter here that you'll see me finish up, I have not taken this to a serger, to a cover stitch, nothing. I've pieced the entire thing together so far on my sewing machine just using a straight stitch. And so in the video lessons of the course, I talk more in depth about how we can get the straight stitch to work, what other options you have. If you do have a sewing machine that has zigzag, a lightning or stretch stitch, if you have a triple straight stitch, if you have a serger, right? All those different uh, situations, I cover them in the video course. Um, I include bonus lessons. So you don't need to have anything fancier than a straight stitch machine. So if you're someone who has uh, a featherweight machine, believe it or not, you can sew a cardigan on stretch knit fabrics on a featherweight, on a vintage Singer sewing machine that just does straight stitch, okay? And I talk about that why, and I share tips and tricks on how to make it work even more successfully for you, obviously in the video course. But if you are someone, raise your hand out there and leave me a comment in the chat box if you have a serger in a box in a closet somewhere. <laughs> I get so many messages from people who are like, I have a serger I bought, or I inherited, or somebody gave me, whatever. It's in a closet. I'm too scared to tackle it. So what I like to do in my courses is that I try to keep them super simple, right? Like I said, all you need is straight stitch. But if you have a serger, visually, you will see the video lesson where I show you, okay, this is what the serger does, and this is where we would use it for this project, okay? And I do the same thing with the bonus lessons that I've added in the course for you with a cover stitch machine. This is a cover stitch, this is what it does. I noticed last week, I posted on Instagram pictures of the new cover stitch that I got, a Juki MCS 1500 uh, cover stitch machine. And I had so many comments and DMs from those of you who were asking, is this the same as a serger? Is this a serger? What is it? And so we talk about that more in the video course, but I will say flat out, a serger and a cover stitch are not the same things. They're two totally different machines. They kind of look a little bit the same because oftentimes you can use three, four, five, sometimes up to eight thread spools or thread cones on them. So a lot of times when people see machines with multiple cones, they know it doesn't look like their home sewing machine, so they just assume it's a surgery, right? So they're two different machines. They do two different things. I like to have standalone machines. You will find some machines out there that are combination machines that you can switch them from a surgery to a cover hem or cover stitch machine. Uh, I don't like those kinds of machines because when I'm when I want a cover stitch, I want a cover stitch. I don't want to have to stop what I'm doing and swap out parts and clip this into place and all this to switch it over. I like to set up my machines, one serger, one embroidery, one cover stitch. I, I'm really, and you all that follow me for a long time and have taken my courses, you know, I'm a huge fan of standalone machines. I find that when they're ready to go and prepared for you to just jump on and use it, you're more likely to use them, okay? So, uh... We were talking about that cardigan. I'm not familiar with it to comment as to how it compares to this one, so I can't really say. But I will say it's a super, super easy beginner project. Like I said, all you need is a straight stitch. The pocket itself, you don't have to cut out pocket bags and put piece them together and then insert them in a seam. There's nothing like that. It's part of the pattern pieces. 
And then speaking of the pattern pieces, there's only five. Okay, so when we release the link shortly, okay, uh, for you all to check it out and see if you want to sign up for the class, you will see that there's also a free lesson in the, the course. You'll have to create an account and log in to access that free video lesson. But say you're new and you don't know much about my teaching style, you've never taken a class with me, that's one option for you to check out one of the free, like one of the lessons in the actual course for free so you can see how it is. Those of you that have taken classes with me in the past, I think you're going to love it. I already had some testers log in, sign up for the class, check it all out, and the response has been overwhelmingly positive. So I think this is going to be a fun way for me to offer even more classes on a more streamlined uh, platform for you. Other questions? All right, I got one more question real quick. Go for it. Um, the question is, is it possible Is it possible to add buttons or a zipper to the Okay, phone? so this is a good question. Is it possible to add buttons or a zipper to this? I'm going to say yes. We are not covering that in the course. Obviously, when I teach these classes on patterns that I did not, did not design, I haven't worked on modifications for them. I like to teach them just as is because the ones that I choose to teach as paid courses, I find are great beginner projects. I have so many of you who maybe stopped sewing clothes 30 years ago, and then you tried my Bobby uh, class, which is another Jolly pattern, or you signed up for my Michelle tank top class. And a lot of you were freaking out thinking, wow, I can't believe I actually made this. So I find that it's easier to kind of teach it just the way that it was designed. And then once you build up your skill set and you start experimenting a little bit more with your projects, you can find ways to attach them. I don't think buttons is going to be that difficult to attach. But again, you will have to check to see how, as it was designed and drafted, how it fits you. Because we talk about uh, making sure that you're using the right fabric in the video course. And there's... Um, Things that you want to keep in mind as far as the amount of stretch in the fabric that you choose to use, especially if you have a fuller bust. So I would recommend if you did want to add some uh, buttons to it, let's say, because that would be way easier than the zipper, uh, because of the neckline, right? Let me show you. The neckline on this cardigan is just like, maybe you can't see it on the black. So let me grab another one here. It's like a draped neckline. Okay, so because it's all connected, you don't have a separate neck band here for you to run a zipper up and then stop it. Yeah, I think it would look kind of awkward if you just had a zipper go up and then just stop right there because the whole neckline is one piece. But say you put one button, okay, first you have to make sure that as it is drafted and the size that you chose to make for yourself that it reaches close enough to even come over to overlap and insert a button. So because you already start to getting into more engineering and tweaking the pattern drafting and all that stuff, I don't like to even touch that because most of you know already, I teach a lot for beginners to intermediate, people that are needing a little bit more confidence to tackle these projects. Then when you get a couple of these down, you can start working your way into more intermediate projects, okay? Any other questions right now? Uh, one, one more. One. Go for it. Um, do you need to know how to read a pattern or will you go over it? With you. Awesome. Great question. The question is, do you need to know how to read a pattern or am I going to go over it for you? That is why I teach video courses. We put the pattern aside after we trace off our pieces and we, you know, go over the size chart and the fabric requirements. I go through all of that with you because it is included on the back of the cover sheet. This information on the Jolly pattern is also on the big pattern sheet. Now, these patterns, if you're not familiar with them and you haven't taken any of my classes before, I love these because they feature so many different sizes. This one covers 27 sizes. So you see how I showed you samples of the one for my daughter, the one that I'm working on uh, working on for her here too? This is a kid size 9. I've made them for myself as well. The size chart in the pattern goes from a toddler, a little girl size 2, and I'm talking U.S. sizes here, all the way up to a woman's U.S. size 22. In European sizes, it would be a size 92 in little kids to uh, a woman size 52. So 27 different sizes in there. For kids, amazing. We sell the patterns for only 12 bucks. They're discounted from anywhere else really that you can find them online. And for $12, you get 27 patterns. If you're making these for kids, you will more than get your return on the investment after making one or two garments, okay? You're gonna make one for your kid this year, your grandkid, your niece, whatever it is. Next year they grow, you make the bigger size. The next year after that, you make the next size, right? And so I love that, especially for those of us that are adults. If your weight fluctuates, you don't have to go buy another pattern that has a set three different sizes in there because maybe you size up or size down from that range. 27 sizes, I love them. I'm obsessed. We buy these, well, we have almost all their patterns. 
We use them for my, uh, my son's clothes, my husband's, my daughter's, a bunch of stuff. And so one of the reasons I also like to feature these is because if you're grown and you don't want to make your own clothes or you're hesitant for any reason, you can make a smaller version of it, right? All these sizes come in the packet in the pattern sheet. They all come together the exact same way. So you can use way less fabric just to kind of practice and audition how is this going to work together and make a little kid size two or three. You will hardly use any fabric and you can walk yourself through all the steps without feeling like you wasted a ton of fabric or time and had some failed results. I promise you, if you make one for a kid or any of the smaller sizes, you're going to have so much confidence after that, you're going to want to make them for yourself over and over and over again, okay? I'm going to start sewing on this. We'll see if we're getting any other questions, and I'll continue talking about the course. And then when I tell you, I guess we can swap over to this um, camera here if you want to now. Let me make sure. Yeah. So, again, I said I'm only sewing with a straight stitch, okay? So, I'm just going to line this up. I'm going to start this. I'm stitching up this um, down the sleeves and the sides. And my machine is the bomb. I don't know if you guys can see, but this has this automate, uh, this like automatic um, dual feed system that's built in. I don't have to change out to like a walking foot or anything if I need to. You know, if you, you're working with bulky fabrics or sometimes when we're working with stretch knits. If you have a regular sewing machine and you've ever struggled, like say the machine wants to eat the fabric right when you start at the edge. If you're working with a lightweight jersey or a single knit, something like this. You might find that the needle just goes up and down and pushes all your fabric into that opening at the throat plate here of the machine. The walking foot oftentimes will help because then it puts feed dogs on the top and so it more easily feeds the layers of the fabric through. I find that on my jukies I don't have to use the walking foot at all. I'm just being fancy and wanted to put that because I was messing with it earlier. You know I'm still getting used to this machine. So remember I said all we need is a straight stitch. I know it's a fancy machine but pretend it's just sewn straight. Speaking of fancy machines, you guys know that I buy all my machines from so many things in Mount Dora, Florida, and they are offering a um, $200 off this machine. You can, um, I, I, the link is inside the video course once you sign up, but you can also visit their web page at their online shop. It's uh, so many things.com slash shop. And this machine is called the Juki NX7. Uh, some of their higher price machines, you can use my Crafty 200 code. Like if you use a discount code online, Crafty 200, you can get $200 off the NX7 or the, the next bump up. There's an even faster machine than this one. Can you imagine? I got to upgrade well, slowly because I've had my other DX7, mm, I want to say maybe for how many years, Brandon? Like what, four, three, four, four years? Oh, uh, Probably three years, I would say. Like three years I've had that one. So I just upgraded to this one. Look at the throat space on this monster, it's huge. But there's another model, one bump up, it's the uh, 3000 QVP. And that one is, uh, I think the MSRP on these, this is like 2995, like 2995, and the other one's 3500. And um, you can use my code of Crafty200 to get $200 off, which is a good chunk of change. You can use that money on fabric. All right. So just a straight stitch, just like we would use in quilting or whatever little, you know, basic bag or pouch projects. Let me know if there's any questions because I can't see from here. Uh, okay, one question here. Yep. Could you use 100% cotton? For the... Like a quilting cotton? For the Does pattern? it have to be stretchy? Oh, yeah, no. For this pattern, it has to be stretchy. So we get into this when we're discussing it in the course. You know, I go through super step-by-step -step in the video course. On all the Jolie patterns, you'll see on the top left corner here, they'll tell you what this is designed for. So in this case, it says for stretch knits. And then there's a 40% right here. So that tells us that the, the pattern and the sizing and the drafting of it is designed for you to use a fabric that has at least 40% stretch. And notice this arrow going left to right. So that means crosswise braiding left to right on the body needs to stretch at least 40%. Okay? Up and down in the lengthwise grain vertically like this, it doesn't have anything. But we talk a little bit more about that and where you would want to consider a fabric that has stretched vertically in the course, but you've got to have a fabric that at least has 40%. Now, there are some ways to work around this, right? So I like to always explain it kind of like a sliding scale. If the pattern calls for 40% stretch, okay, and you have a fabric that you absolutely love, 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 and it only has 20% stretch, 
that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't use that fabric to make this cardigan. It just means that you need to accommodate for the lesser amount of stretch the fabric has to make sure that the garment is going to fit you once you make it. Okay, so if the fabric has less stretch than what the pattern calls for, you probably guessed it, you're going to have to size up because you need to have more room in there, meaning you need to make a larger size because the fabric doesn't have enough stretch. Now, if you're using a fabric that you love and it has like 100% stretch, it's the opposite. You'll need to size down because 100% stretch is going to have so much more give and room in there that you're going to be swimming in that garment if you use a fabric with that higher amount of stretch and still cut it in your same size, okay? So hopefully that makes sense to those of you that have never, um, I get that a lot really from people that have never made clothes before because it's so hard, right? The pattern companies try to give you uh, estimated details as far as like, here's a guideline of what types of fabrics we think will work best. So for this one, it says you need a knit with 40% stretch in the width, which we said was side to side because that's where our circumference measurements are your bust, your waist, your hips. We need the, the fabric, right, the finished garment to stretch over those wider parts of our bodies. It says the fabric should have a fluid drape, so we don't want anything stiff, okay? And then it says if you have a full bust, choose a fabric that also has vertical stretch, okay? So if the fabric has zero vertical stretch and you have a full bust and it only has 25% stretch along the crosswise grain, I can tell you right now, eh, you're barely going to be able to get it on. Because <laughs> you have less than the uh, uh, recommended amount of stretch in the crosswise grain for the main fabric, okay? And then you don't have any vertical stretch, so it's not going to accommodate over your bust, meaning your bust is going to lift the fabric up in the front, so it's going to be like asymmetrical almost. Like the front of it is going to be lifted up, right? Because your bust is on the front of your body, and you don't have anything on the back shoulder blade, so it won't balance out. The front of the garment will be lifted because of the larger bust. And if you've ever, you know, put on a dress like that or a, a t-shirt where it looks like it all has an even hem and then you put it on and the front is way shorter, that's why, right? Because the larger bust up front is going to lift that fabric up. And if there's no stretch in there to, you know, kind of help it even out some, then it's going to be more noticeable. All right. I got one more quick question, Go Vanessa. Can you use double brush poly for Ooh, the fabric? Great question. So the question is, can you use double brush poly? Let me grab a chunk of double brush poly to show you all. Now, I am a fan of double brush poly, but not for this project. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Let me grab a chunk. So here I have a scrap, well, it's not really a scrap piece, it's like a yard, of double brush poly. Double brush poly is a DBP, also you'll see it known as or, or written on the internet as the letters D, E, and P. It stands for double brush polyester spandex. So the double brush means that the fabric has been brushed on the pretty side and on the wrong side. If you all are familiar with those leggings and like tunic tops that are really popular out there that you feel like so fuzzy and soft, it's lightweight, super duper stretchy, and they just feel so soft on both sides, that's what double brush poly is. Now for this garment, I don't recommend it for a couple reasons. One is that the cardigan is not a top or a dress, right? It's not the single layer that's going on your body over your undergarments. This is outerwear. The cardigan is designed to go over top of other clothes, right? Whether it's a tank top or a t-shirt or whatever. So double brush, if you've never worked with it before, tends to cling to other fabrics. So if you have a double brush tank top underneath and you make a double brush cardigan, that thing is like gonna be sticking, 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 and it's not gonna be as fluid and as drapey as you would like it to be and as this pattern is designed to be, okay? Did I just like stop sewing? I cut my thread and then went to get that fabric. Wow. Okay, no, I didn't. I was going to lose my mind. That's the basting stitch from the pocket. I was like, really? You just did that? You didn't even notice it. <laughs> oh, this is not as easy as it looks, y'all, to sew and focus and talk and answer questions the whole time. But the double brush tends to cling to stuff. If you like a snug fitting garment, this is a dream. Like over you just your bra, oh, it feels super duper soft. It's like almost like a bathing suit on your body, but it's so lightweight, you know? Um, so I make a lot of t-shirts. What, what do we make a lot with the double brush? My son has made me yeah. t-shirts, which I have a free video um, so along on YouTube. Uh, shorts. Uh, headbands, oh. shorts he's made, like loose fitting ones, obviously. But I made leggings out of double brush. Obviously, they don't have a lot of uh, like compression qualities because it's such a lightweight knit. 
but it's so, so soft. For comfy leggings, they're a dream. So yeah, I would not recommend double brush for this, gar for this project. It will work if you want to kind of give yourself a little bit of room and play there so it doesn't cling quite as much. Maybe size up. You may not even have to size up depending on the double brush that you use because a lot of the DVP tends to have like 120% stretch, 100% stretch. So like I said, you might even have to size down if you work with a fabric that has that amount of stretch. And um, does this machine have a walking door? A walking door. What about walking? But, oh, that's probably autocorrect, a walking foot. It does. This machine also comes with a walking foot. Let me grab yeah, I have, walking foot. I have my accessory kit thing here. Back to me. Um, now that I look at it, you know what? I don't see a walking foot on it. It's probably because it just has that built-in thing. I'd have to look at the user manual. I still have like half the stuff in the box, y'all. Yep. I don't think it would have a walking foot, really, because it has a built-in walking foot that you can disengage and engage whenever you want to, right? So I have mine set up here. And I did notice on the settings on the machine earlier, I was just like kind of playing around with it. I haven't really dug into the manual. Um, you can adjust like how the, the dual feed pulls, right? Like if you needed to uh, advance the fabric more, you can like increase it or decrease it. So there's like some settings that I can mess around with back here that I haven't played around with yet. But I've always really loved the look of this built-in um, dual feed that I've seen on like the Fox sewing machines. So of course I'm super excited to have it on this machine. And notice I'm just, this is just sewing straight. If you all can sew straight and you can follow your guide, all you got to do is use my tips and tricks in the lessons of the course and you're going to be good to go. What time is it, B? It is 8.30. It's 8.30. What do you think? Should we drop the link? It's up to you, boss. <laughs> he says, it's up to you, boss. <laughs> okay, let me just sew this up. I'm, like, super excited. Is anybody excited out there? Can we get a comment, those of you that are excited and waiting to get in at the early bird sale price? I'm going to tell you, for those of you that are watching live now, if you get in on this sale in the next, I think the deadline ends in four days, okay? If you get in on it, say tonight, tomorrow, obviously sometime before it expires, you're going to be saving $28 off the regular price, which I think is a chunky, a chunky bit of cash. And I said the course has 28 different video lessons. They never expire. You can rewind them. And there, if you've taken my classes before, uh, you know how I had separate videos for the different lessons. This makes it super easy for you to kind of switch from one video to the next. And when we give you the link, you'll be able to scroll through and see the titles of all the 28 lessons so you can see visually exactly what you'll be getting when you sign up for the course. So notice, this is just straight stitching. I had already pinned it, so all my notches are matching. I know nothing is misaligned. And this might not look like a big deal, but this is a lightweight jersey knit. For this machine to just be going through it from beginning to end and not eating the fabric or anything is a dream. But we already knew that from the jerseys, right? All right. Trim my threads. All right, let's swap it to the other camera now so that I can flip this thing the right side out. Hey, everybody, it's me again. How many of you already got your Helene patterns? That's another thing. We were running low on the website. Did we sell out already of those patterns? We might have already, but it's set to back order. I talked to um, my friends at Jali today, and I've already placed another order for patterns, so they're on their way to us from Canada. So don't worry. Even if it says back order, just go ahead and order it. As soon as we get them, uh, we should have them here no later. I want to say early next week, like Monday, Tuesday. As soon as we get them, we'll ship them out. Okay, so you all can have your pattern because you'll need it. Remember, the pattern isn't mine. Because I didn't design it, I can't really include the price of the pattern in the course. So the pattern, oh my gosh, this is so cute. Oh, to be eight again. How, how cute. So this is the little cardigan. Look how cute. With the bottom and then the pocket right here. Allie's going to love it. I think she'll like it. And that's it. So all it's left to do on this one is to hem it. So, and I show you step by step how to hem it. And so in the video course, some of the lessons, when we get to the finishing steps, I will show you how to hem if you have a straight stitch. I will show you how to hem if you have um, decorative stitches on your machine. And I tell you what to look for on the one that I recommend, which is a triple straight stitch. If you guys have taken any stretch knit t-shirt classes with me and other classes online already, 
You know how I love my triple straight stitch. Then we talk about how I would do it on the cover stitch machine. And then I, I do one sleeve on the cover stitch machine and then I do the other sleeve, I hand the other sleeve back on the sewing machine. Okay, so I always talk about stitch length, uh, what we need to adjust, whether we're basting. It's a con I like to call it a construction seam. It sounds a little bit technical, but if it's a seam that's holding two pieces of fabric where it's gonna get some wear and tear and you don't want it to fall apart, right? So I think this is gonna be super, super cute. So all we have left to do is to hem the neckline. Remember, it's that drapey, kind of fluid drape neckline. Then we have the two sleeves and then the bottom hem. And that's it. There's five. So there's five pattern pieces, but we end up cutting out eight pieces from our fabric because some of them are cut double, right? Like the two front panels, the bottom two here, and two sleeves. So cute. And you can make it out of so many different fabrics. We said cotton spandex. This bottom one here is a cotton spandex, but this top one here is a cotton jersey, but I think it's, it feels more like a cotton interlock. Like they're stretched and maybe a little spandex, but not maybe 5% like those. So you can mix and match fabrics too. Obviously you don't want them to be like double brushed and then one that doesn't barely stretch. You might run into some issues, but if they're close enough, you can totally coordinate them like this. Super duper cute. Any other questions for me? Um, I wish I could put it on. Do you wanna know what the price is? Okay, so let's talk pricing. So the price for this video course, remember I said 28 video lessons that never expire. You'll have access to them indefinitely. The price right now for the early bird sale price is, drum roll, no drum roll, $47. Which I think is pretty crazy because if you were to take this class in person, not that people are really teaching sewing classes these days in person, 28 video lessons. For me, this would be, in my teaching style, a two-day workshop or a really, really long one-day workshop. And that would be about $125 to $150. So $47. And I always compare online courses to in-person because in-person, if you've taken them before, most times you don't end up finishing your projects, which is always a big goal for me as an in-person teacher. I like to have all my students leave with finished projects. But even when you do complete the project, two months later, you don't remember anything. Right? So with video courses, you won't have that problem. You can pause, make dinner for your family, go back, watch the next video lesson on your own time, and you can always go back to it. And you don't have to re-remember, you know? Two months later, you make another one. Maybe you don't remember how to do the pocket section here. You just have to watch the video lesson on that section, and then you can move on. So $47, after the early bird sale price ends, okay, the price is going up to $75. So. Can we post the link for them to sign up? We're gonna send you a link. We're gonna post it now in the comment section where you can go to see the homepage of the course. You'll see all the video information there. There's even a little intro video from me. So if you're still kind of on the fence, watch the video, look through the video lessons and you can um, make the decision for yourself. But trust me, if you wanna get into making clothes or you've only kind of did, dabbled in it and don't have any like amazing garment to show for it, I think this little cardigan is perfect for any time of year and for any of these 27 different sizes, okay, that we've already talked about. This is actually one of my favorites. It's such a funky one. Other questions? Have we given them the link? Whoopsie. There goes my hand. I'm going to put this one on. Y'all already know this is the coldest room in my house, so I ain't got no problem wearing long sleeve shirts. So my apologies for moving the microphone. And this is a Westchester Dolan top that I'm wearing under here. So comfy. I see some thumbs up. Thank you, everybody. I hope you are super excited to tackle this class. Remember, we're getting more patterns if they're sold out. If you're one of the first 50 to get in on the early bird sale price, as soon as you get your login link and you check out, log in, go to the welcome page, the first lesson that says welcome, right underneath my video where I'm welcoming you to the course, you'll see the secret link on where you can go to buy your kit, your supply kit, at a discounted rate, and we're shipping them worldwide. So, look at this little pie. It's so cute. Don't mind my uh, pajama pants, yoga pants I'm wearing under here. <laughs> it's the beauty of working from home. Isn't that cute? It's such a funky print. But I love it. I don't know what it is about this. It's not even really my colors, but man. Look at that. If you all got your hands on some funky, funky fabrics, people will not believe that you made this cardigan. So cute. Any other questions for me? Uh, can you use Jersey Knit? Yeah, can you use Jersey Knit? So 
All these words are kind of interchangeable when we say cotton jersey, jersey knit, cotton spandex, cotton lycra. When you say jersey, and even sometimes shops when they sell you this, whether it's online or in person, might just say jersey. You want to make sure that it has some spandex to it. So I try to stay away and I recommend my students stay away from jerseys that don't have spandex. The spandex is that added elasticity in the fabric that when you stretch it, like you're putting it on, it bounces back to its original shape. If you get a jersey, and usually you'll find this with like tissue jerseys, which are really thin, like single jerseys, they're almost see-through, they'll be knits because they stretch, but when you stretch them, they stay stretched out. You don't really want to have that over anything that needs to go over a shoulder, your elbow, anything that pushes out on the fabric that stretches it, it'll just stay bowed out. Like when you straighten out your arm, it'll be like the fabric stretched. It's not a good look. So I would try to see if you can get the fiber content information for that fabric. If you see that it has spandex in it, um, in the U.S. they call it. Spandex is the generic name for it. The trademark name is Lycra or Lycra. And in, overseas, I think in the U.K. and Australia, maybe they call it Elastane. So any of those, it's the same thing. It's like elasticity added into the fiber blend, right, so that you have the stretch and then it bounces back to its original shape. That's what you want. This is such a cute one, it's super duper casual. It's a little smaller because it's not my size. We like to make the samples in a bunch of different sizes, you know, so people can see. And these little cute ones for Allie. This is the one that I made when I filmed the video course itself. I chose to make a smaller size because I like to show you all the shots, right? I put this on the table, all the pieces, how we lay out the body pieces so you make sure that you're sewing them correctly. All these are things that you don't really think of or that oftentimes even just by reading the pattern instructions, it's not easy to grasp. You're still thinking, no, maybe I'm doing it wrong. Is this backwards? Does this go here? So with the visual of it on my big table showing you exactly, you know, pretty side of the fabric facing up, this one pretty side of the fabric facing down. Trust me, if you've never taken one of my courses before, <laughs> you're going to surprise yourself because you will be able to complete it and like this. I will say, and I always like to do this, not to show off, but to kind of give you a, a guideline of like how long it will actually take. So this one that I just whipped up, you saw me stitch down the sleeve and the sides here on camera for you. I just cut out these pieces and pieced the whole garment together right before we went live in less than 20 minutes. So that's cutting the fabrics, laying everything out with the pattern pieces. The pattern pieces were already cut, obviously, because it's my daughter's and I've already made her a few. But I cut out all the fabric pieces and sewed everything up in less than 20 minutes. So I can make one of these hemmed and all, even just on a regular sewing machine with a straight stitch, um, probably in about 30 minutes, 35 minutes maybe. So not to say that that's how fast you're gonna be able to make it in, but get multiply that by five. Even if you can make a cardigan in a couple hours, wouldn't you? It's like a no brainer, right? This is not a super fancy dress with seams and all this kind of darts and stuff. It's a cardigan that it's like an instant gratification project. As soon as you cut out the pieces, this is what I was telling somebody yesterday. I was like, by the time you tell yourself, I don't think I can do this, you'll already have the pieces of fabric cut. So at that point, it's kind of like, okay, well, let me try to sew it. Why not? <laughs> so hopefully you all will check out the class. I hope to see you in the class. This new platform, those of you that have taken classes with me before, if you sign up for the course, let me know your feedback because now you'll be able to post pictures, post comments, ask questions right on the discussion board, right in the, the cardigan course. So I'm super excited for that because if you don't know, you know, which two fabrics go together, say you're making a two-tone one, feel free to post a picture in there and we'll help you choose. Obviously, it's going to be <laughs> probably 50-50 because you know how matching fabrics can be so subjective. But uh, it'd be fun to hear from everybody. And I know a lot of you are not on Facebook. So a lot of the action goes on in my Facebook groups. But if you're not on Facebook, sign up for the class because you'll have your kind of own built-in discussion right there to get feedback from myself and from the other students. Any other questions? Um, just some folks just with some technical difficulties having trouble signing in. Okay. Um, so one thing to note about signing in, if you've signed up for other classes on our regular website, you will have to create a new login because the platform for this new course is different. You can use the same login that you created on our craftygemini.com website, but you'll still have to re-enter that information there to create a new account on this new platform, okay? And it's still through our website, but different logins since this is your first time accessing a course on the new uh, platform, okay? And if you guys ever have any technical difficulties or questions, don't worry. We still have four days before the price goes up. 
just send us an email at bea at craftygemini.com. And um, tomorrow I have a couple girls helping us too to package up these kits and get them shipped out and answer emails. So we'll definitely have an entire team ready to help you uh, get everything sorted out if you're having any issues to make sure that you can get in at the $47 early bird sale price. Okay, so don't worry about that. Just reach out to us, obviously, and let us know what you need help with, and then we will get you all set up. Okay? Make sure that was it. So if you're wondering about kits, because I know we've been getting questions this week when we were saying, hey, we're going to get ready to launch this class, a lot of you were asking about the kits. If you sign up for the class on the first welcome lesson is the secret link on where you can buy your kit. Okay, it's not available to the public. You won't be able to find it in our online shop. You have to have access to the course and click on the secret link there to get your hands on one of the kits because we only have about 45 or so kits to go around. Can you show the pockets of the jacket, please? The pockets? Let the me clothes. see which color. Because some of these on darker fabrics don't show up as well. So the pocket is just a little slip in pocket, just like that. This one was done on the serger. But you don't need to have a serger. Don't freak out. <laughs> so it's built into the garment. It's amazing. It makes it such a quick, quick, and easy make. Okay? Other questions? Well, they can watch the video later. It will be... Absolutely. This video? Yeah, if you're tuning in late for any reason, you can just replay this video. It'll be right here using the same link I sent out via email newsletter. Um, on my YouTube channel, you can always just check it out. But just know that when the countdown on the link that we sent you to the page where you can sign up for the courses, when it runs out, the price is going up to $75. And like I do with all my classes, we'll never put the price this low again. So if you are thinking about it or might want to, we got four days to decide. Other questions? Um, Nobody asked anything about thread or anything? Well, we did talk about cotton. Oh, I think, no, they asked about cotton. Fabric, right? Somebody asked about using quilting cotton fabric. You don't want to use quilting cotton for this. Remember the pattern on the back said you want fabric that has some drape, 40% stretch along the crosswise. For thread here, I always like to use a good quality um, polyester thread. And this is something I didn't mention, but the kits, when you log into the course, if you want to use the link there in the first welcome lesson, once you've paid and gotten into the class, you will see the link for the kits. Each kit includes, duh, I should say this, two yards of the fabric that you choose is a drop down box you can choose the print or the color that you want one spool of the high quality polyester thread that i use for all my garments no matter how stretchy it is when it's like active wear workout pants sports bras that kind of stuff i always use the polyester thread that's included in the kit you're getting a pack of 175 ballpoint pins which are the pins that i use whenever i'm sewing with stretchy stuff i just dump it on this one i know that my red magnetic pin cushion is the one that has my ballpoint pins in it and you get a pack of five ballpoint needles, the Schmetz brand, which is high quality needles in the size 8012, which will work for any of these like lighter cotton jersey knits all the way up to the double knits that uh, I've made several of these in, the Liverpool, the Bullet, that kind of fabric. So you get a five pack of needles, the spool of the matching uh, polyester thread, two yards of the fabric, and the needles, the pins, the thread, and the two yards of the fabric. Okay, so the whole kit, you basically, aside from that, just whip out, you know, something to cut your fabric with and your sewing machine, and you're going to be good to go if you get one of those kits. So I know a lot of times it's hard, especially when we're getting into garments, if you don't know where to find fabric that will work. And the fabric, I will say, these kits that are such a discounted price, that if you got one of those kits, even if you get a fabric that you don't like, it would be the perfect first project so that you kind of walk yourself through the steps learn the new skills the techniques that we cover familiarize yourself with how to work with and manipulate the stretchy fabrics whether it's rolling on you or whatever it is it's a totally new sensation if you're just used to working with freshly starched quilting cotton <laughs> working with jersey and uh, stretch knits is totally different so it's something you gotta kind of get used to also it's not hard it's just different on the hands and so even if you get a fabric that's not your favorite that you don't want to make for your final garment right Make one in a smaller size, just practice it. Because whenever, when we talk about making muslins of our clothes, I see this a lot of times with beginners especially, where they wanna make, say, this stretch garment, a t-shirt or this, say this cardigan, for example. And they say, well, I'm gonna make a muslin out of it, meaning like a sample run through, okay, of the garment. And they show up with quilting cotton. Well, you're not gonna get a true and accurate representation of what the finished garment in your fancier 
good fabric would be if you're using a fabric that doesn't even have the properties of what you're going to be using later on. So you cannot make a, a, a muslin out of a fabric that has zero stretch to then say, okay, the pattern is perfect. Now let me go cut it out of my stretch fabric. It just doesn't work that way. You always want to be making your sample or prototype piece out of a similar fabric. It could be a, a lesser quality, it could be thinner, but something close enough so you get a, a close to accurate right representation of what a finished garment in the correct fabric as designated by the pattern instructions is going to be in the end. Questions? Where do you see the kit? Where do you see the kit? Okay, so if you've signed up for the course, you access your Helene Cardigan class. Right when you see all the lessons, you'll see all 28 video titles on your left-hand side. The first one up top that says welcome, click on it to watch that video. And where you see my face talking right underneath my face there, you'll see it where it says click this link to purchase your kit or to check out the kits. Okay? So it's in the first video lesson of the actual course. And um, are we still using the old website for other courses? So right now we are still using the regular craftygemini.com for the other courses. Don't worry, that's not going to disappear on you. We are working towards putting all those classes on this new platform because it's just way easier to access. It's like a more streamlined and bright look. I think you'll see that once you log in if you're familiar with my other classes. But we'll still leave those on there and we'll be creating you individual new accounts as we add the courses on this one too. So don't worry, nothing's going to disappear. If you're halfway through a project, you'll still have access to everything at all times. Other questions? Um, when is the class? I'm asking when is the class? So when is the class? The class is available right now. Believe it or not, I've already filmed and edited all 28 video lessons. So right now, if you sign up at the early bird sale price of $47 using the link that we've included for you in the chat box, you can log in and all the course is right there for you ready to go. So you don't have to wait. Um, those of you that are going to be waiting to get your fabric and stuff, I still recommend that you watch the video lessons through so you can start to see how it comes together. Uh, but yeah, everything is there. If you have everything you need on hand and you already ordered the pattern, because I know a lot of you have been ordering from us already in the past months in anticipation of the course release, then you have your pattern. You can get started tonight. I guarantee you somebody's going to post a finished cardigan by tomorrow morning. I bet. I bet. We have people that are already ready. Y'all have ordered fabric. You've had the pattern. You're just ready for the video course. So they're all there. You won't have to wait for me to drip out any content or anything. All 28 lessons are ready for you to view right now once you, um, you make the purchase and log into your account. Other questions? Um, These are good questions, y'all. Can you tell them, I'm sorry for typing so loud, I guess they can hear me typing. They can hear you typing, good lord. Yeah, I hope they can hear me talking. <laughs> <laughs> Our apologies for him typing so loud. Let me grab my tea real quick. My voice, boy, I talk a lot. Uh, what kind of needles are you using? So I'm using ballpoint jersey needles. If you snag uh, the kit, you'll get a full five pack in there, okay? I like to use size 8012 ballpoint jersey needles. The Schmetz brand is my favorite. Uh, and I use, like I said earlier, I use the same size, 8012 um, Schmetz ballpoint or jersey needle for lightweight jersey to double knit, okay? And um, since we were talking about double brushed polyester spandex earlier, I will say I often use the ballpoint jersey in the 8012 size for DVP also, but um, I've also used like a size 7010 in a pinch because that double brushed poly tends to be a little bit thinner than some of the jerseys that I typically use. So 7010, 8012, you know, the thicker the fabric, obviously the larger the needle size you want to go. But maybe if you use the scuba knit or something, you might want to try the 8012. If your machine for some reason has issues going through it, then I would bump up to a 9014 ballpoint needle in those instances. But they tend to work fine. I mean, I've never had a problem on any of the juke machines that I use. And my kids so cotton spandex. They make t-shirts and tank top dresses and stuff, and that's what we always use. Uh, can I use Ponte? Can I use Ponte? So Ponte would be great. It would give it, I think, a really structured, kind of a, not really structured, but a little bit more structured because it's a double knit. I would check to see that it has that 40% stretch that the pattern calls for along the crosswise grain. And in the video course, I show you step-by-step step how to determine, you know, the percentage of stretch, crosswise and lengthwise. Those are all kind of like beginner recap lessons, but I include everything on each course. So if this is maybe your first paid course that you're signing up for to take with me, don't feel like, oh, it sounds like she's taught all this before in other classes. I teach it all again. Remember, I teach a lot of beginners. It doesn't matter. I will go through step-by-step step any skills or techniques that I feel like you need 
to finish this garment, I assume that the viewer knows nothing. So I will cover all that. And for those of you that have taken classes with me in the past, paid courses on stretch knits, it's just another refresher. You know, the cool thing about having those video lessons is that you can just skip that one and go to the next one if you, you know, feel like you already know that stuff. But everything will be right there for you. So for the Ponte, I would just check that it has a minimum 40% stretch going this way, crosswise grain. And then, like we read in the pattern earlier, if you have a full bust, make sure that it has some vertical stretch. But yeah, I don't see why not. The Ponte would be a great double knit to use for this. A very kind of businessy look. I mean, this is kind of a businessy look, just not in this wild print. But it's kind of how I like to. <laughs> ah, I love color. Surprise. Other questions. Um, do you have to have a new account for the new website if so, you already have an account for the old website? So do, the question is, do you have to have a new account for the new platform or the new website um, if you already have an account for the old one? Yes. So because we're using a new platform for this course, you'll need to create a new login when you go to pay and sign in. You can make it be the same email address and password that you use on craftygemini.com but you'll just have to create a new one. Remember, this is the first new class on this fancier, cleaner, amazing platform, okay? I'm so excited to be using it. And um, you'll have to create a new account because this is how you'll access it. But you can access it from our website going further. And we'll send out emails with more details, but it's not that big of a deal. You can click the link, sign up and pay where it says create your account, just create a new account. And to your, all you need is your email address and what, your name and email address and a password that you create, and that's it. And what is the name of the fabric that you're wearing now? So the name of the fabric that I'm wearing is uh, Liverpool. It's a textured kind of crepe finish double knit. It's a polyester spandex. And this is one of the fabrics that we have in the kits that you can choose from. I think I just have it listed under feathers. It's wild because it looks just like abstract. But when you look close up, they are actual feathers. Well, I'm probably out of focus, but they're feathers. This is so wild. I like to wear it just with like black and black, you know, and black shoes, everything else black and just have the the, the wild cardigan speak for itself. <laughs> One more good, good question. Okay, we got another good question coming in. So what, what if I buy the pattern now, but I can't do it for a month? Awesome question. So the question is, what if I buy the pattern now, meaning the class of the pattern? Yeah, the class, the class. What if I buy the class now and I can't do it for a month? That's up to you. No worries. Like I said, the course content never expires for you. So you'll always have access to it. And uh, raise your hand in the comment section or let me know if you're someone who signed up for classes uh, from us for years and maybe have still not gotten to it. I have people that say, well, I'm going to sign up now and I retire in two years. So I'll come back in two years and I'll be able to make all these projects. That's fine too. You can always go back. You can make one, you know, six months from now, three, four years from now. You'll always have access to that content. It's yours. Once you uh, sign up for the course, those videos are for you to access. Okay? But we get that a lot. You're not the only one. If you're thinking, oh, I just don't have time to fit it in, <laughs> I would say, what, 70% of the people that sign up for my stuff don't do it right when they sign up. Because we get emails sometimes when I'm launching like a whole nother class or a bag club or something, somebody will write me and say, hey, I think I signed up for a wallet club maybe like two years ago. Can you guys tell me how to log in? And we just pull up your account, boom, boom, send you the link and be like, here, we reset your password for you. Enter your account and there is your content because... It's what we say, right? When you sign up for it, you get unlimited access. It's yours. And what's the model of your Juki again? The model of this Juki is the Juki N, N as in Nancy, NX7. The NX7. And this is like a step up from my Juki DX7. So NX7 instead of DX7. If you all were either on the cruise with us in February or you got in on one of those sales from the cruise machines that we sold back, well, not we, but that's so many things sold in February. That was the DX7. So this machine is a bump up, bigger throat space. This is a wild throat space here. If you're a quilter, and this is what I like about these machines is that I can do anything on them, right? I, I said already earlier that I was a big fan of these standalone machines, a, a standalone embroidery, a standalone serger, a standalone cover stitch. But for my sewing machines, because I sew so many different things and different types of fabric, I don't want to have like, this is my favorite machine for sewing through thin stuff. Then I have another machine for sewing for quilting. Then I have another machine for sewing through stretchy stuff. I can't have all that. That's way too many machines already. The other ones get away with it because they're specialized machines. But all my Jukies that are um, computerized machines, I can sew jeans on them. I can sew uh, uh, 
uh, a chiffon cardigan or beach cover-up thing on them. I mean, from the lightest weight fabric to straight up denim, okay? And I can quilt on them, I can free motion quilt on them, I can piece my quilts, I can make clothes, I can put a buttonhole, put a zipper in. I sew all that kind of stuff, cork fabric, leather, vinyl, right? Clear vinyl, pleather. I mean, I want to be able to sew through everything. And that's why I like these machines, because I feel like they're the best bang for your buck, to have a multi-purpose machine, you know? If you just sew quilts, you might have a different take on it. If you just sew clothes, you might like a different machine. But because I sew all the things, I need a machine that can sew all the things. Right, one more question. One more question. I feel like we've been saying one more question for the third. I know, I know, I know. Mom. There's a good one. I lost it. A good one. You lost it. Come on. There's a lot happening, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh man, come on. Where are fabric. your kids? They're probably on screen. Okay, here it is. Um, is any ninety percent polyester, ten percent spandex the same? I see that it in chiffon and I also see that content in other fabrics, so it's confusing. Okay, so the question is. Is 90% polyester and 10% spandex the same? Like if you have that fiber breakdown, if it's the same across all fabrics. So one thing about garment fabrics and garment sewing fabrics is that I can tell you 95% rayon, 5% spandex, and I can show you 11 different fabrics. So you can't just go by that, right? Those of us that are quilters, if you enter the world of garment sewing, it's super confusing because when you say cotton, we know what cotton is when it comes to quilting, right? You know what it is, you know what it feels like, it's pretty much the same across the board, right? Some are a little thinner, some are a little thicker, less quality, higher quality, but they're all the same, pretty much. In garments and apparel fabric, it's a whole different beast. You have to really know the fabric, have somebody who knows the fabric to tell you, hey, that fabric will work, or no, no, that won't work. And so the reason that it takes more time, I think, to to get better at sewing clothes is because you need to sew more garments, right? I can feel a fabric and not even know what it's made up of and tell you this will work, this will not work, based on the feel, the drape, the thickness, the hang, the stretch. So the more you work with different types of fabrics, the better you will get at understanding that. So no is the answer to your question. 90% polyester and 10% spandex, just because you see that doesn't mean that it's the same across the board, okay? It might be a different thickness, it might hang different, if it's chiffon, obviously it's going to be way drapier than, say, a double knit that says it's also 90% polyester and 10% spandex. So it is confusing. I agree with you. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons my courses do so well, because it's more like hand-holding. Like, I'm narrowing down the overwhelming choices and options for you by telling you, okay, this is the project. This is the fabric that will work. This is another fabric that will work. This is a fabric that might work, but if you want to use it, do this or do that, right? And so by giving you kind of in a more narrowed down sense of instruction, I feel like with every new project that those of you that sign up for my classes to take on, you get better and better, you know, at understanding it. Because all these fabrics have different amounts of stretch, even the ones that are the same fabric. So this is Bullet, this is, or I'm sorry, this is Liverpool, this is Liverpool, and this is Bullet. So they're, Liverpool and Bullet are double knits that are mostly not like 95, some are 94, some are 96 percent polyester, and then that remaining bit is spandex. But some have 80 percent stretch along the crosswise grain. Some have 40, right? So if there's no way to really be like, look for exactly this fabric. You have to feel it, you have to know, you have to, that's why sometimes when I try to buy fabric online and I look at the description, it doesn't say anything. It'll just say polyester spandex, cotton spandex. It don't give you a percentage breakdown. It doesn't tell you what it's good for. So, you know, it's good to buy from companies who do a little bit of research or know their fabric a little bit more. Some you'll see that they'll say in the description, great for pants, um, pants and skirts. Then you know it probably is what we call like a bottom weight fabric. It's a little bit thicker and heftier. That's why they're recommending it for something that goes on the bottom half of your body. If it's something that's super lightweight and drapey, you'll often see it say great for tank tops, dresses, blouses, right? So you kind of... As you make more projects, you'll kind of create your own archive of info <laughs> so that when you touch or see a fabric, then you'll know, oh, that will work for this project, but it won't work for that one. That's why I talk about in the course, when we're reading the back of the pattern sheet here, it's super duper important to read those words. I'll read you these ones for the cardigan. It says, it's an open front cardigan with high back neck that creates subtle draping. Okay, all those words are telling you. So this has a high back neck. If you're working with a super stiff fabric, it's already, you're already going to know. It's going to stand up like this if it's super duper stiff. If that's not the neckline you want, 
switch up the fabric or try a different pattern, right? Uh, it has a super easy pocket, waist seam for color blocking. So that right there already told me, hey, I can color block, which is what I did on this one that I made for Allie, right? It has a waist seam, so we can color block. Boom. Just by reading these words, you already are starting to come up with your, your design ideas. Well, what fabrics can I use? How can I manipulate these pieces to create a cool look that I want to wear? Then it says, okay, so waist seam for color blocking and slightly flowy lower back to give it more movement. So flowy, movement, you already know, you need to have drape in there. That's why when we discuss the fabrics, the suggested fabrics, it tells you, hey, you need a knit with 40% stretch in the width, crosswise grain, with a fluid drape, because the back of it is designed to be, to have that fluid movement. You can't have a stiff fabric on the back end of the cardigan, it's not gonna hang the way that it's designed to, right? So read the words and try to think about them as you're choosing and selecting your fabrics. Then it says it's a quick sew thanks to the ingenious construction, which, of course, I've already bragged about a million times. The pockets are built into the front pieces. It's such a quick and easy make. But again, it's a quick and easy make, but it's a good foundational piece, one, for your wardrobe, but two, to build up those skills, you know, to tackle more complex projects going forward. Other questions? All right, the last question. Okay, this is the last question, y'all. Se acabó. What is it? Are you making a lining for the jacket so the inner seam is not seen? So no. So this is just a really kind of just easygoing, quickie project. You could line it. Obviously, it would make it even bulkier. Then you want to keep in mind the size that you're making it in. Because if you're adding a lining to it, you're going to be eating up more of the room on the inside. So you'll want to size up, right? There's all these different things that you need to consider when you start talking about lining. So this is not that kind of a project. It's not that formal of a, of, of a, a top, right? It looks like a little bit of a suit because we're using a double knit, but it's not a fancy like um, suit top. It's not like a blazer or anything, right? It's more like a little casual piece. So we talk about this in the course because the pattern tells us if you do have a serge and you want a more finished look on the inside, we finish off the seams, the ones that are the most exposed. So the sleeves, this neckline area, and then the bottom hem. This one I did not serge. And so in the course, I show you examples on why it doesn't matter and why you don't have to have a serger. If you do have a serger, I will show you how you would use it and what edges you would finish for a more professional looking finish. But notice, all those areas that would be searched, hello, they're hidden when I'm wearing it. Nobody's gonna see that, you know? So this is how I like to set up people, especially beginners. Just make the project, start off, finish on the outside. People that don't sew are not gonna be like, let me see on the inside. And if they do, boy, just slap them. Not really, but <laughs> but it's just like make the garment, finish it off. There's no sense in kind of adding all these additional layers of difficulty to it um, to give yourself more areas to make mistakes and then not want to finish it and then feel bad about yourself and all this kind of stuff. I like quickie makes that are going to set you up for success. You're going to feel empowered. You'll want to make more, and then you'll keep growing with your sewing skills. That was the last question you said. <laughs> you got another one? No, I'm just I could be here all night, y'all. I could be here all night. Yes, all right. Well, we are going to call it a night. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. If you're just tuning in, we have um, shared the link here below for you. And don't worry, y'all. I'll send out an email. If those of you that are maybe watching the recording and are wondering where you can get the link, we will post the link so you can sign up at the early bird sale price so you can make this Helene or Ellen cardigan with us online. 28 video lessons step-by-step -step from opening the pattern sheet tracing out the size, we'll go over the size chart, how to make it, what fabrics, how to check the stretch in your fabrics, the thread, the needles, the machine, the stitch, all the things. Like I said, 28 video lessons for you to make this cardigan in one or more of the 27 sizes that are included in the pattern. So we do have the pattern for sale. Remember, it's not my pattern. We're using the Jali 3677 Ellen cardigan. And uh, if we're sold out on the site, we will uh, ship them out as soon as we get them. We have another big order coming from Canada, from Jelly. And just go ahead and place your pattern order there. And you can sign up for the class at $47 is the early bird sale price. That price is good for the next four days. If you're catching this after, sorry, you can still sign up for it after the fact. But the price is the regular price of $75. Okay? All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Let me go see what my kids are up to, and I will see you all in the next video.